Hi guys, my name is Janelle. I am an American citizen. I was just able to fly from the United States to Helsinki, Finland. Um, the process was difficult and a little bit confusing, but I really wanted to make this video to help anybody who, you know, is dating somebody from Finland or the US, vice versa, and uh, wants to know how this process works, wants maybe even a little bit of hope that it's possible. Um, I'm, I did it, it is possible. It's just a tad bit confusing. Um, but if you keep watching, I will detail exactly how I did it and link resources that can help you in the description box below. So please keep watching um, if you're trying to do this impossible thing. Um, yeah, let's just get into it. So whether or not you are trying to get to Finland um, from the US or another restricted country, or you're just kind of curious on how I was able to do this at all, um, let's just jump into it step by step because I feel like I have a lot to cover. This might be a long video, but I promise if you stick with me, uh, good things might happen. I can help you get there, hopefully. Okay, so let's start from where we even got our information from. Every morning we googled US travel bans, EU travel ban, Finland, unmarried couples, separated couples, just any keywords that we possibly could that would give us any information on when the travel bans were getting lifted or when exemptions for the travel ban were coming out. So we would just Google every day trying to see any information, which I'm sure a lot of you are doing. That's not, you know, insane news to you. You are also doing that. Um, but finally one day, Finland did decide that they were going to allow unmarried couples entry into the country. They were going to make an exemption for people separated from the travel ban, which was amazing. Um, however, um, they did put out the official exemption, like outlines and restrictions, and it was just completely vague. I will, of course, link um, those restrictions in the description box so you can view them. But basically, basically, they say if you are in a relationship, they don't really have a set outline of what your relationship has to be. They're, like, they didn't mention proof, they didn't mention anything like that. They just said, mm, we'll see. I got in touch with the Finnish embassy in the US, who told me to talk to the border guard. And the border guard was basically just like, try it, and maybe. Ultimately, it is up to a competent, I'm just reiterating word for word what they what they told me repeatedly, um, it is up to a competent Finnish border guard to decide whether or not you are allowed entry into the country, which I know is terrifying. I was terrified. I thought, should I waste thousands of dollars to try to fly into this country only to potentially get turned away and have to pay thousands more to get new tickets and be heartbroken all the way home. Um, I was terrified. It was such a limbo situation. It was like, do I want to do that? I mean, if I don't do that, I don't see my boyfriend. I don't get to go. So it was, it was a time. It was a very hard time. Um, and this all happened very fast. This was all happening over the span of like a week. Um, me emailing somebody, me waiting a day, me wa emailing somebody, me waiting days. Um, but basically the border guard just said, you need to come talk to us in Finland and we'll listen to you and we'll decide. So that's, that's the information that I was given from the embassy and from the border guard. So eventually, um, after losing my mind for a week, I remembered that there was a CNN article about a, uh, a Finnish American couple that had been separated by the travel ban and um, you know I kind of just googled her name you know found her social media kind of like a creep and felt awful for it um, but she was super duper sweet I messaged her and basically said hey I'm so sorry that I'm the creepiest person alive right now but I, I, I can't help but notice you're currently in Finland how I do that <laughs> The, the essence of the message was like, I'm so sorry, but how do I get 
there. How do I get there? Please. But she was so helpful. Um, and she broke down exactly what she did to get to Finland. So that's what I will be telling you guys right now. I will be relaying that message. Um, I am going to help you get to Finland. Just stick with me. I promise you and me we're going to get to Finland. I was already there, but now it's your turn. So, the most important thing, the most important thing is you need to have two separate tickets. You cannot fly from the U.S. to Helsinki on the same ticket. It's not gonna happen. Uh, the reason for this being is we're still technically not allowed in Finland, so they won't let you get on the plane if they see that that's your your destination. They don't. They don't care. Um, they don't care if you tell them I'm going to see my boyfriend. I'm going for this reason. That's not up to anybody in America. That is not up to anybody in the US. That, that They don't care. Who's going to care is Finland. So you have to be able to get there to even, you know, get your story heard. To even like make your case, you need to be in Finland. So I had a round trip ticket from Boston to Heathrow. That was my first step. From Boston to Heathrow. And then from Heathrow, I had a separate ticket from Heathrow to Helsinki. Those were important because we're allowed to fly as Americans. We are allowed to go to the UK right now. Um, I know there's like lockdowns are happening there again. There's quarantine that is happening there again. I understand that, but just bear with me. We, you need to fly to the UK first. Um, I had no problems boarding my first flight since I was boarding in America and going to a place that was okay to go to. They didn't give me any problems with security or check-in or anything like that. I had no problems. The flight went by fine. It was about an eight hour flight from Boston to Heathrow. Um, and it went off without any hitch. I mean, everybody wore a mask. I didn't really see anybody not wearing a mask. I would recommend wearing the blue surgical masks, the disposable ones, just because you know, things get kind of nasty and you want to keep switching out your masks. And um, I found they were most lightweight and yeah, easy to switch out because they were getting kind of nasty. Okay, so my plane landed in London and now here, here's your next step. You're going to want to follow the transit signs. Do not go through customs. You don't want to go through customs. You don't want to stamp in your passport. You don't, you don't want to leave the airport. This is very important because you need to be just in transit. You as a person are just transiting through London. It is not your destination. You don't want to be there. Um, so you need to make that known. <laughs> you need to make that known. Now, what do you, do you need any documents specifically even though you're transiting through London? Yes, you need a COVID contact tracing form. Um, you can find this available online or they do email it to you a couple days before your flight. I believe it can be filled out no more than 48 hours before you board your flight. Basically, it's just your information, an emergency contact, how long are you gonna be in London for, that sort of thing. So basically just put, I'm gonna be in London for less than 24 hours, I'm just transiting through, it's not my destination, here's my emergency contact forms and all my stuff. So I printed this out and kept it with me, but I don't, no one ever asked for it there because it's also in their computer system. So it, you can print it out if you want to be safe, I did, or you can just fill it out online and maybe even to like keep proof of it on your phone or something like that in case anybody asked. But the most that happened was someone said, did you fill out the contact tracing form? And I said, yes, ma'am. And then that was, that was it. That was the end of that. So. My plane lands in London, I go through the transit thing. What I did need to prove, I needed to show my boarding pass from the flight I was just on. I needed to have that boarding pass, whether it be on your phone or in paper, you need that boarding pass. And then you also need the next boarding pass. You need to scan the next boarding pass to the flight you're getting on. You need to show them that you are not staying, that you are getting on a flight in a few hours, that you are you're leaving. You are not London's problem. <laughs> so after showing them those two things, I was just let through with no problems. Um, none at all. Now here's the kicker. 
you poor Finnish Americans. Here's the kicker. I was in the London Heathrow Airport for 10 hours. That was the, my time. <laughs> Now, the reason for this being, let me explain to you why I had such an extreme amount of time between my flights. I know that that seems terrible. Um, I was flying Finn Air to Helsinki. Um, the girl that was helping me earlier told me that was the easiest way, you know, flying Finn Air, it's their airline, it was easiest, it was easy to book, it was cheap, it was great. Um, they have cut down their flights substantially. So there is not that many flights flying to certain places anymore, which is understandable because there's not very many people flying or re you know, no one has a reason to fly there. So there were two flights that would leave to Finland from London per day. One of them I was never going to make with my first flight. It was a morning flight, I believe. It left at like 10 something London time. And then the next flight is like 6.30 p.m. Um, I've also heard that if there's not enough people on the first flight in the morning, they'll just, you know, swap you over to the evening flight anyway. So to be on the safe side, just take the evening flight. Um, that's why I had such a long layover. Also, in case your first flight, in case there's any problems with the first flight, delays, cancellations, you need to find a new one, you want a cushion because you are on two separate tickets. You're flying risky. You're going to be flying. Two separate tickets is risky. It is. <laughs> because if one, if one thing happens with one ticket, you don't want a domino effect. You don't want all your tickets to be become ruined. You don't want your entire trip to become ruined because something happened with one flight. So to be on the safe side, give yourself that cushion. Give yourself that gigantic gap. It'll suck, but it'll be worth it to kind of go off without a hitch. So, um, I just kind of played games on my phone. I texted people, I waited out the 10 hours, and then it was time to board my thin air flight. Um, so I went, to, I went to the gate. Uh, when it was time to board, I handed them my passport and my boarding pass, and here's where things start again. Tricky. And by tricky, I mean not that bad. She scanned my boarding, my passport, and her computer lit- I saw her computer. It lit up with, like, this big red, like, <clears throat> sign. It said no, and- but she basically was just like, why are you going to Finland? And I was like, oh, I'm visiting my partner. And then she typed in the words, visiting partner. And then it calmed down and she said, enjoy your flight. And I was, I was on the plane. So that was a hurdle. My heart did a couple, like, when I saw the big red, but it was okay. It was all, it was all right. I got on the plane um, and it was a two hour flight. And then I landed in Helsinki. So my flight lands in Helsinki. So let's, let's first go over what I was prepared for the border guard. What documents did I have to show the border guard that, you know, I deserve to be in this country. So I had an invitation printed out that was written by my boyfriend. It had his name, his address, his phone number, and his email on it. And it was an invitation basically saying, I want her in the country to come visit me. I'll be responsible for her. This is what we're doing. And we had that just to be on the safe side in English and Finnish. I had the receipts for the hotel we stayed at and for the Airbnb cabin that we stayed at. I had both of those receipts. And then I just had a separate sheet that was just, you know, kind of redundant, but just once again, my boyfriend's info, just all of his info um, that I could ever possibly need to give this man. So I walked up to the Finnish border guard and I said, here's my passport, I'm so sorry, it's American. <laughs> and he was a little hesitant at first. He was very non-enthusiastic, not enthusiastic about me being in this country. He was, he was very kind of taken aback that I would even try <laughs> to be in the country. But I basically told him like, hey, I've been in contact with the embassy and the border guard and they both told me like, this is like what I need to do. So he took my invitation. That was what he asked for. He asked for my boyfriend's info and the invitation, both of which I gave him. And um, my heart's racing at this point. I wanna say I was sweating buckets. That might sound like an exaggeration, but there was sweat pouring down my face. Um, I could feel it accumulating in the small of my back. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was 
a, a mess. I was a, tr it was a mess. Um, I don't know if maybe his English wasn't very good, but at one point he just pointed at the phone and I said, like, of course, like, do whatever you need to do. I thought he was calling security on me. I thought he was calling the police. I thought um, I was getting thrown out of this country. Um, it turns out he called my boyfriend. He called my boyfriend and basically asked, like, do you want this person in the country? Do you know she's coming? What's her name? What's her info? And basically just checked what my boyfriend said against my passport. And obviously he was like, yeah, that's, that's her name. I do want her. I'm at the airport right now. He did ask if my boyfriend was at the airport to pick me up. I don't know if that was a requirement. He just was. <laughs> so I said, yes, he's here right now. He's outside. Um, you know, whatever. So he called my boyfriend and then, you know, he didn't want to, but he said, welcome to Finland. And so from there, I got my boyfriend's car. We danced into the sunset. It was fine. I mean, hearing other stories that people have gone through this really, I mean, it wasn't bad. I was let into the country. Um, the 14 day quarantine is optional. Um, I didn't like quarantine specifically at one place, but we didn't go, we didn't take public transit. We didn't go anywhere with a lot of people. We stayed in an Airbnb cabin. Um, in the middle of nowhere. It wasn't terrible. We were very careful. I was going home was pretty much a breeze um, They cannot deny you entry back to the United States if you are an American citizen with a US passport They cannot deny you entry back into the US. So going home was pretty easy. I mean, I was still anxious that like Something was gonna go wrong, but I felt better about it knowing that like you can't tell me no <laughs> You can't tell me I can't get back into the US. So that was a little bit better. So I hope I covered <laughs> I hope I covered enough of this information for you guys um, Like I said, I will put all of the links for you guys down below to give you any information that I can remember on how to get into Finland any information I can remember uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, if I forgot any information, I will try to include that in some way. Um, just as well as if you guys have any information that could be helpful, I will try to get that out to people as well. Um, but that's all that I basically have for now. Um, so again, thank you so much. I will see you guys in the next video if you want to, you know, keep up to date with my journey in all of this. Thank you guys so much. I will see you guys later.